in our atmosphere plays an important role in the formation of clouds and weather systems. But how does water get into the atmosphere, and why can't we see it? To find out the reason, we have to understand what the water cycle is and how it works. The Water Cycle The water cycle is the continual movement of water among Earth's atmosphere, bodies of water, and land. Remember that a molecule of water consists of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. In the water cycle, H2O moves because of the processes of evaporation, transpiration, condensation, and precipitation. Evaporation! Solar radiation that passes through our atmosphere warms up both the lands and the oceans. That radiation causes the ocean's temperature to increase. Some water on the surface of the oceans and big lakes turns into water vapor and rises. This is called evaporation. Evaporation from bodies of water is not the only way water gets into the atmosphere. Evaporation can also take the form of... Transpiration! Water vapor enters the air through pores in the leaves of plants. For example, the leaves of a square kilometer of delicious corn adds 900,000 gallons of water per day into the atmosphere. This process is called transpiration. Now I bet you're wondering, what happens to water once it's in the atmosphere? Condensation! When water vapor in the atmosphere begins to cool, it turns into tiny droplets of liquid water. This is the process of condensation. The temperature at which water vapor in the air condenses is called its dew point. These tiny droplets of water attach themselves to particles in the air, forming clouds. And as long as the droplets are small, they float in the air. Water completes its cycle by returning to Earth's surface. But how do you think that happens? I'll give you a hint. It's wet and falls from clouds. Precipitation! Precipitation comes in many forms, including rain, snow, sleet, and hail. Pretty much all the things mailmen hate the most. Water droplets eventually get heavy enough to fall back down to Earth's surface. The water that falls from clouds is absorbed into the ground and eventually makes its way back to oceans, rivers, and other bodies of water, continuing the cycle. Now let's look at the California coastline. Awesome! Here we can see the water cycle at work, and also observe another phenomenon known as the rain shadow effect. We've seen how the air absorbs water vapor and carries it to the coast through clouds. On the west coast, this moist pocket of air travels eastward until it comes across mountains like Mount Shasta or the Sierra Nevadas. As this air gains altitude, it cools and condenses, causing precipitation to occur. The air will typically get rid of most of its water vapor before ever reaching the downslope of the mountain. By the time the pocket of air makes its way over the mountain, it's stripped of almost all its moisture. As the air moves down the opposite slope, it warms up and sinks, becoming very dry air. If you look at the west-facing slopes of the Sierra Nevadas, you will see that they are green and lush. But if you look at the east-facing slopes, you will see that they are very dry and desert-like. This is the result of the rain shadow effect. The rain shadow! Let's review! Why don't you try taking everything you've learned and see if you can recreate the water cycle?